Hello and welcome back to my walkthrough to Final Fantasy XV. In the last long episode, we um, we completed a fair amount of stuff, uh, doing a lot of smaller missions uh, and eventually making our way, uh, do doing some work for Cindy and some things like that. Uh, and now we are ready to hopefully finish off um, Chapter 2 in this episode. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, make our way to So we're just going to, um, we're not technically heading to the Blue Mines in this. I've just uh, wanted to start heading south at least initially. Um, but we'll then start heading, um, starts heading north. Okay, we've already heard all of these, I think. Really doesn't want us to turn uh, to turn right here. <laughs> Glad you're reading a book. Anyway, yeah, so uh, in this episode we're going to make some more progress. We're going to head up uh, and take on, you know, finish off the end of Chapter 2 and finally unlock a much larger section of the map. Um, but at the same time, uh, we do have some smaller side quests and that's what we're, uh, we're looking at completing initially at least here. So the reason that we have stopped here is because we will find some more, uh, another person to help because they are, they're injured and they need help. Still really struggling to get those cross chains going, so hopefully that will uh, change. But that works out quite nicely. Okay. So I'm just going to check exactly where we are on the map. I think we need to head a little bit south, um, but I'll just check my element C capacity, at least for the, for the electrics. So yeah, we're just going to head south uh, a bit more and try and find us a stricken hunter whom we can uh, whom we can help I'm not sure it's going to be around this area is that treasure up on top of these at all bits and bobs Looks like there may well be a way to get up top. Okay. So we'll just...
Doesn't look like we're meant to make our way up there. Looks like we're going to get some, some Imperial joining in as well. Why am I warping away is what I want to know. So some level 16 Imperial troopers. I don't know if they're... And just, just a Saber Tusk able to, to, to wander about. Not attacking us or anything, but... <laughs> rogue. See, so yeah, I think those soldiers were higher level than they were in the last episode, but I might be wrong. The 16 seems just a little high for uh, chapter 2 in the game. So how, if at all, it may well just be that it's the, the maps being useless as it frequently is. <laughs> um, the map in this game is not great and uh, that is, it is a source of many frustration. Okay, so the treasure is just around here. A mega phoenix. And our injured soul is no longer calling out to us, which is a little odd. Yeah. Ah, there you are. Okay, excellent. So, first side quest of the episode complete. And now we will head back to the regalia and um, head very briefly north. Um, To stop off at the um, at the set of barns over there. Octo to. I didn't actually mean to fast travel because, frankly, there was no point in me fast traveling there. But oh well. So these two. Um, the reason that we didn't get these earlier these two uh, rescue quests is because they're only unlocked are having done the one that we did at the end of the last episode so the one that was um northwest of hammerhead and so now that we uh now that we are past that we are able to um to attempt these rescues um but previously they would just they just wouldn't have been available We put out a dust storm, which is, I think, the first time I've ever. Pelt poachers. Not a happy. So there we can hear another hunter, who I believe will be in this barn. Yep. Thanks. Should be able to take it from here. Ooh, that couldn't have gone any better. 
Okay, so that I believe is most of what we wanted to get done um, in terms of the smaller quests around this area. So we will now start heading north, uh, head towards um, our main quest. But first of all, we will um, stop off at Dave uh, in order to hand in the quest from him as well. I just realized that that's going to take us, I think, the slightly wrong direction just because we may well have... Uh, another car that we can help out as well. So. So yeah, once more we'll, we'll hop in the car, we'll make a small journey, and then um, and then it'll just be a matter of um, meeting up with Core and Monica and all that. So that looks like a person in distress. So we're going to complete Stranded on the Sand. And having done so, we're now going to as we say, head into the Imperial base for a decent chunk of um, combat at least. Um, as we uh, attempt to clear out the uh, Niflheim blockades that have been um, impeding our progress, certainly. So there's the tunnel where we found um, the first um, of several motor parts that we need in order to help Cindy. I don't remember if we actually installed the motor parts with Cindy. I don't think we did, so we may well want to adjust that at some point. So we'll see how far we get in this episode. Um, we'll probably get way past the end of chapter two. So if we start... Um, uh, we'll start having uh, to look at sort of chapter three and beyond. Uh, and definitely chapter three is where things really start to um, to open up, at least. Uh, we get access to um, the area of Disguy, which uh, if you had the demo, if you had the Platinum demo, then you've, you would have already uh, sort of uh, certainly had a look at. Um, but... Uh, but I think the main thing in Chapter 3 that we're going to be looking for is to get access to riding chocobos. Um, so, sup, Dave? Okay, another decent chunk of experience. And... Uh, further making progress in the 
along Dave's sequence of quests. He is now... Um, I'm assuming that may well be him there. Um, Is there a darts mini game that I've never known? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is this in the game? <laughs> yeah. For free AP, I had no idea that that was there. Okay then, fine. Okay, I'll take the AP. Oh. We find some new things about these. <laughs> you know, it might be an absolutely massive game and there's a lot of criticisms I know a lot of people have of it, but in being so absolutely massive. You can still find really small things like that and... Okay then, let us keep going. Okay, so yeah, quest location, everything else we can't do. So, declaration of war. Um, we won't because it's super close. just as the music was starting to build up. So, I believe we're meeting up with Monica and then we're gonna have um, a combat encounter um, working alongside Core. And something I do wanna check is whether we can, we can. Okay, so always good to use stuff like Sabertus Claws. Dual cast. Fira, then Fira, Orphan Dara at random. And we can get to a rank level 99 spell with plenty of charges as well which is interesting so unless um the item is you know unless the uh, material that you're sort of uh, using up is going to be useful in a quest um the only other real purpose for having those is um Again, for using in things like that, or also for um, for selling to earn um, small to meager amounts of gil. So we can take on some more annex here. Something lovely and peaceful. Poison cloud is (laughs) 
So is that suggesting that if I have a, an enemy down and... So if I have an enemy down and vulnerable and I warp strike to them, we can initiate the warp chain, it looks like. Okay, so now what we want to do, the other thing I really wanted to, I just remembered that I wanted to start off with, is um, definitely want to do some, uh, uh, some of this. So I think we should have enough now. where we can unlock playing as each of the rest of the Sugar Bros, which is really, really good. Um, it's definitely something that's going to, to, to help us out as we go through. Okay, so what do we have? Some air slip. Um, okay. And we'll do analyze as. Well, so these I think are just things that will happen through the automatically through the course of the battle, um, compared to like the uh, the techniques which you actively select for them to use. If I, if that wasn't already clear. Cool. Okay. So having done that battle and probably made Monica very annoyed because this is, if this is meant to be like sneaky sneaky and we've just been like causing a big ruckus outside. Okay, so it's going to be solo for a bit for Noctis and Core. But I don't think this little section has too much for us to be worried about. Once we're in, we launch our ambush, pushing out while support pushes in, crushing the enemy from both sides. Okay, then.
Okay, excellent. We might as well make the most of Core whilst we have him. Okay then. as Core just continues to demolish the enemies on the ground. So, I mean, I could use magic here. Core just able to take them out from the floor because he's core and and he's very effective. I feel like I'm kind of not really necessary in this particular uh, set of battles, but there we go. Okay, so we're now behind enemy, behind the blockade, behind the enemy walls.
was like, why aren't I attacking? And it's like, oh yeah, I've got a spell. I'm currently holding onto a spell and it's... Uh, and it's empty of charges. Come on. We'll just let. That did jack shit core. Come on. Little too ambitious there. Yeah, still rushing this. And down it goes. I feel like the, mat the, ba the music in that battle with Loki was sort of building and building and building and getting ready and it just, because we took ages to actually finish it off. But still, yeah, I mean, that battle's not too bad. Um, he obviously does a lot of damage with his feet and you can dodge them more successfully than I can, uh, certainly through that battle. Um, 
if you're able to break any part of um, of the mech, then that can also allow you to do a whole bunch of damage uh, quite nicely. Noctis in his successful darts darts pose there. So I very much was trying to focus on the snipers and trying to take them out, but they are they were just in very annoying positions because they kept falling off the little ledges that they were standing on. Um, at the same time, I think it's a good idea to do that, to actually focus on the, um, the smaller enemies. And so what I could have done is maybe swap to Prompto and shoot them down. But anyway. So here we have it. Chapter 3, The Open World. The Empire is a powerful foe, and Noctis has far to travel before he can hope to reclaim the crystal. He sets out across new lands in search of the power of his forebears. So chapter three um, is another pretty large, pretty open chapter um, in terms of main stories and things like that. Um, Obviously, we could very quickly sort of rush in and make progress um, with regards to that. Um, I think the progress in this chapter would be getting heading towards yet another uh, royal arm and completing another dungeon. But what we'll probably be focusing on, at least, is looking at a fair number of the side quests that are around this area. Um, and obviously continuing just to make just to make small bits of progress here and there. Something I noticed that we actually didn't have any uh, food for that. Okay, so we're finally able to drive wherever we want and not having to get Ignis to auto us places.
Okay, so as you can see, we've got um, a pretty major side quest in um, Feathers. Uh, what was the quest called? Friends of a Feather. This is a pretty major side quest which leads to us finally being able to ride chocobos and greatly um, makes moving around the map a lot more convenient because uh, you're no longer having to just either rely on the car or running around anywhere that there's a chocobo symbol and we've seen plenty of them in the different towns and stuff like that you could then hop on a chocobo uh, and rent that out and uh, and that works really nicely um, so obviously our main thing is to head over to Lestolum, which we can do pretty much straight away if we wanted to, but there are, as we can see, a bunch of other things uh, that we might want to do. Um, both Emergency Delivery and the Evergleaming Regalia are both here around the uh, area of Ulster, Ulster Slough, or Slough, not quite sure how you pronounce it, it's O-U-G-H, which means it can be pronounced any, any way it wants to be, really. Um, so yeah, so we've got a bunch of quests uh, sort of just a little to the south. Um, there's a quest just below that, which is uh, this one. This uh, is a fishing quest um, with uh, a character called Navith. We've then also got um, quests down here. This is where uh, the, chocobo, uh, the chocobos are. So this is where we'll be headed just for prompto. Um, and yeah, as we, um, so yeah, as we make our way south, there's also, as you can see, a couple of quests uh, here in the Kernix station um, that we will start up. First of all, being Dave over here. Okay. So where was so where does that take us? So that takes us uh, over towards the way if we were heading towards Lestolum. Okay, looks like he's sort of cycling through some of his his chat. The other thing that we'll want to do is uh, just to pop into the shop here because um, they may well have some auto parts for us to to purchase. <laughs> hey there. Okay, so over here um, we have racing, so a set of racing stripes <clears throat> and memories of Final Fantasy III. And then we've also got some uh, some fishing gear as well. So all of the sort of basic fishing gear that we're, we were able to get right at the start down in Golden as well. Prompto's love of chocobos is, is, is adorable and uh, totally don't blame him because chocobos are great. Like how this is this is what they've decided to make the um, how they made a seat for Kenny Crow here. So yeah, so this is the where we'd rent a chocobo here, or the rent a bird. Uh, so we will check the radio at the same time. I'm just going to also going to uh, also see if there are any um, hunts that we want to to, to take on. So we've got some havens, parking spots, outposts. So obviously it's, it's marked Lost Olivon as an outpost there. Uh, some procurement points as well. Okay. I'm ready to take your order. So we've got all the usual um, Kenny's, Kenny Crow dishes here in terms of Kenny's fries, jetties, etc. Take a look at the menu. And in terms of hunts... So 
So this one's in Ulster Slow, and this one's also, I'm going to call it Slow, it may well be anything else, but there we go. Or Slough. Okay, with that being that, we're now, I'm just, I'm just going to uh, check the radio. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we get a bit of a backstory there on a few characters, and we will talk about that in a sec, just once we start the quest that is here. Well, if it isn't Sonya. Huh. Somebody you know? Spoke with her just the once, back at Hammerhead. Now that you mention it, you were... So, Noctis just sort of gets completely walked all over. Uh, so that's Sanya Yeager. Um, we actually, she was spoke on the radio uh, once. So we've already heard from her once, uh, but now you get to meet her. And... <laughs> just, just casual playboy, play, playboy gladio is best gladio. Uh, yeah, so, um, as we were saying, um, see, we've already spoken to, 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 to Sanya, well, we've heard from Sanya before, but now we get to talk with her, and she starts a series of quests which are largely about collecting frogs. Um, they can be some pretty frustrating quests to find at times, but it's not too bad. Okay, so we have some Garyulas and a Garyulasa, which is probably 
would be a bit of an annoying battle to at least take on at this stage. But you can see that we've got a bunch of quests that are all around this area, so um, that's what we're going to be going for. And I was vindicated to know that it was called a slew, which is good. Because, um, I mean, it is an actual word. It's just, you get used to it because in, um, obviously for Britain, uh, there's a place called Slough, which is uh, spelled exactly the same way. And um, O-U-G-H just being the annoying set of uh, letters that it is. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about, um, let's get back on topic. So um, we obviously saw a... Uh, cuts in the cutscene um, before we saw something about Niflheim. Spe specifically, we met the, uh, or at least we saw once more the Emperor, Edelus Aldercapt, as he was talking to um, four main members of his sort of group. We saw Vestile, um, who is like head of the infantry, or he's like the mastermind behind the infantry. Uh, and he plays a big role in one of the... Um, main fours um, extra uh, one of his extra um, one of the extra episodes hey look this has got to be the sky bingo <laughs> wonder what it'll do guess we'll find out when Cindy sprays it on the car feels like we become Cindy's personal errand boys yeah I think it's great you're seeing Kaylee's nope Connor <laughs> of course he does. Okay, so yeah, so we've got another field of Garula, which we could probably take out. Is it Garula meat that uh, Taka was looking for? So I'll just quickly check. So, great swords, fire. So, uh, glad should be doing a bunch. We could change our spell to... Um, our new Fira one uh, at a at any point really. But yeah, so um, so as we take on this battle, um, we're saying that so we saw. Um, Edelus, we saw the style. We obviously also saw Ravus. Uh, so importantly, um, and this is covered slightly more so in the, um, well, certainly a bit in the anime. Um, sorry, in the film, in the Kingsglaive film. We find out um, some more of the reasons why uh, Ravus in particular, for example, is... Uh, working against us even though um, he's obviously related to Luna and Luna is very much working with us. Okay, so we've actually got some more chaos. Yeah, so, we, so we've seen that uh, Ravus is now working alongside the... Um, well, certainly working alongside uh, Niflheim, which is slightly worrying. And then on top of that, uh, that worked out quite well because the uh, the soldiers are weak to electric. So then, and then in the background, um, you also saw two other named characters. Um, a female called Aranea, who we will see a lot more of in the upcoming chapters. And uh, another one, ooh, four tooths as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a true party now. So yeah, so we see um, Aranea, who uh, 
who we will fight, and uh, she plays a much bigger role uh, in upcoming sort of chapters of the game. And then also, um, so obviously we've already taken out Loki, who obviously wasn't uh, too serious of an enemy for us. Um, but so we, we've taken on Loki, and then uh, the other character in that, uh, as Ignis gets a new recipe, the other character in that uh, set of four standing before the Emperor um, is another character, uh, Caligo, who um, will also fight. He essentially is, uh, he works alongside Loki. And we fight them in a somewhat similar sort of manner. Okay, so that is the that lovely quest done. We also have completed emergency delivery because he needed the... I think he was looking for garriola sirloin, so that made sense to take care of the garriolas there. Um, still, we're going to keep going uh, down towards... Um, keep making progress, work our way down towards the... Um, down towards the slough. And we are not going to fight the Gary Alessa. I think we could de defeat the Gary Alessa because just because it doesn't have... Like just as we've sort of brute forced other battles uh, in this uh, series so far. Okay. So we've got some green garriolas and some standard ones. know what why don't we if we can let's Lovely. Okay. Okay, so we swap back. So we swap back to Noctis once we finished in combat. But that was fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, getting to play around with Gladio's combat system. So each of the combat systems for each of the other characters are essentially imported from the combat systems that you use in their um, respective uh, DLC chapters. Okay, I don't actually think we've got any space, so we will, as we pass by yet another haven, we will have to start casting some spells in order to, to use these up. Just because it, make, it makes sense for us to use more elements, it makes sense for us to keep doing this. Um, 
Okay, we actually need to head back across. Because we want to get back uh, back onto the slough. And then once we're there, we'll be able to um, obviously take on our second hunt, um, but also uh, complete or at least tackle another couple of quests. And then eventually we'll want to head in there, uh, which is the Nebula Wood, uh, a location which... We will take on the behemoth called Deadeye that um, was mentioned in the, on the radio broadcast um, as part of... Um, so Deadeye was a big part of the... Um, so yeah, so um, Deadeye was a big part of the, the demo, the Platinum demo. And he also, in this case, is important because he's what's standing in our way uh, between us and chocobos. And uh, as anyone can say, you should never stand between uh, Prompto and his chocobo. It's just not going to go well for you. So I think that's just the Magitek engine. And... I mean, there we go. They're all dead. <laughs> I guess it goes to show the power of, um, certainly the power of spells. Um, if used correctly, um, you can really do a huge amount of damage with spells. Um, to the point, and given that you can continually make stronger and stronger spells, it can almost break the game uh, to an extent. But for now, I'm happy to uh, keep making use of them, at least to make things easier. So... Just wait for my... Okay, so pole arms. Oh, lovely. Whew, that was cool. Resorting to poison, I see. Okay, not too bad. Poisoning was a bit annoying, but aside from that, not too bad. Obviously, um, the way you can deal with stuff like poisoning and things like that is you... Um, That was annoying me. The others, it will pass. They'll lose the poison eventually. Okay, so map-wise... We want to head up there towards Navith, and we also want to take on this quest, where we look for tiny red frogs in a relatively large area. Um. 
So we've made our way to the Orster Slough. There is a red frog. You can tell, uh, obviously, they do make uh, small ribbiting sounds uh, as you approach them. But uh, just because they are quite small, especially if you're doing it around, uh, you know, towards the, uh, the evening, it can be uh, a bit more of a frustrating find than anything uh, to try and find these little, these little frogs. That's a third. There's a fourth. The other thing, obviously, at this time of uh, day is that we need to worry about um, potential for fiends to turn up and ruin our day. So the majority of these frogs are found around this, this rock. But I seem to have misplaced the fifth one. Ah, there we are. That's quite cute. That should do it. <sighs> All the bounce has gone out of me. Let's present the whole to Sanya. <laughs> the gift of frogs for a lady. No one's a first for everything. The Magitek engine. It's close. Okay, so as we've said, um, I'm now going to try and head down to Navith and take on his quest as that magic engine is really struggling <laughs> i think it's realized it wanted to drop down its its its, its cargo but couldn't because it, they would just all fall into the slough um, which the idea of just is 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 very very funny um anyway so this is navith he is a fisherman and we'll give Noctis a bunch of challenges. Fishing Buddies, a great name for a, for a side quest. Uh, so yeah, so just as Sanya gives us a quest associated with, uh, associated with frogs, Navith, Navith will give us a series of quests um, primarily involving catching more and more difficult, uh, difficult fish. So we will be doing some more fishing. Um, Okay, so if we're looking for a crag barramundi, we should go for that one. A 
that's a big looking fish. It might be quite a big fish, but it doesn't seem too hard to reel in, at least. Obviously, I do have uh, improved gear from what I might be expected. And it is also a... Uh, obviously, yeah, edible fish is the golden one. This one seems very, very fussy. So I think I said in the last, in the previous thing that I might fast forward through some of the, uh, the fishing heavy episodes. Um, I think I definitely, there's something I didn't do in the last one, but I think I might well do in the future just because I do appreciate that, uh, uh, there's going to be obviously a limited um, draw to watching someone fail at the fishing mini game over and over again, as it seems. Come on. So yeah, so I may well uh, fast forward through um, some more fishing intensive episodes uh, or sort of like you know, long fishing sessions. Uh, obviously, we'll highlight, like, rare fish gotten or things like that. Come on. Really, really fussy fish. There we go, all of that, and then he immediately jumps on it. Okay, get another Barramundi fillet. And then, um, do we have anything? Ulster bass. That sounds good. I have no idea if these are Ulster bass, but um, we're in Ulster slough, so that makes sense. we got there a lucian catfish so very, very much not what i was throwing the lure in for but it worked out hmm, 
Saving crew. Little catfish that time. Can you hook something like boss level? That one quickly. A short horn bluegill. And there is one more fish here. We might as well see if this this lure seems to be working well, at least around here. I was hoping to see something epic. A mortal struggle between man and fish. Is, are you saying that's not what you're seeing here, Prompto? Looks like another bluegill down there. Noish. So, a pretty successful fishing trip. And we can return to, certainly return to Navith and uh, complete our little quest. And then continue making our way south towards, um, towards the Chocobo house. And despite being just a fishing thing, it gives experience to everyone, so I cannot complain. Okay. Okay. I wasn't going to try up that lure, actually. I was going to check the map and continue heading south. You're in charge of finding dinner tonight. I do like the um, the group dynamic is really good between these four. I think, uh, and it, I mean, if it wasn't the game, there'd be a lot more about the game that you'd find, or I would find, difficult to um, sort of look over. I think there's a fair amount in the game that you know. I'm able to give it a pass on just because the, you know, the character relationships seem so strong um, between the main group that it almost isn't nearly as important. Um, let's dual cast. What else do we have? Stop cast. Just increase the power. Quadcast. Okay. But yeah, so with a you know with a um, a core relationship dynamic between these four that is as good as it is, it does mean that there's a lot um, 
of the game's niggles and criticisms that obviously a lot of people have spoken about in, um, in other videos and in reviews and all that sort of stuff, um, that I can definitely, um, definitely forgive. Okay, so we'll continue to head south. I think this might be a weapon, this, this specific treasure. It is. It's a Calamity, uh, which is a pretty good handgun if I... It's, yeah, it's a 20% boost to, to that, which I think is pretty useful. Okay, so... As has been said before, we'll continue to head this way. And eventually we'll hit Wiz's Chocobo Ranch, which is the second major... Um, the second major outpost that we'll have found today. And then at some point we'll want to um, head back, head to... Um, We'll want to head back to Hammerhead. Seeing as we're near, why don't we make a stop at the Disc of Corpus? Yeah, that sounds good. Wonderful. I've always wanted to see the Meteor of Legend. So, uh, that is a very unique little quest uh, that you get from Ignis. Uh, one of the only quests that you'll actually just get from Ignis. Um, as he uh, suggests that we head over to the Disc of Corthus. Um, and there is a time limit to that quest. We need to do it before the end of this, uh, this chapter, I believe. Worse vices than chocobos. You want weapons? We got lots of them. Okay, so in terms of weapons, so th you can tell that these are slightly more stronger. So we've got ones that sort of increase your magic. They see that calamity also um, is a a poisoning weapon. Pleasure doing business. See you later. I do want to get a shield, just because Gladio currently does not have one. Um, and I feel like giving him one makes sense. Okay, so the reason that we are here is because we need to have a chat with the owner, Wiz. Well, there we have it. So we hand in a couple of hunts. I did not realize, I, th I thought you could only hand in at the place where you, you, you picked it up, but that's excellent to know that you can hand in hunts wherever. I don't know if that was something new. Y'all still keeping on, keeping on? Okay, it's a new outpost, another fishing spot. The main reason I want to be here is because we're going to get a Choco Club sandwich in order to help us out with the upcoming battle.
And then... So a behemoth undertaking is the story-based hunt that you need to do. And then uh, Exorcism of the Nebula Wood is an interesting quest that... Um, an interesting and dangerous um, hunt that we will take on now. I do not know where, in terms of quests, where that one is. Okay, so very, very close by. I doubt we can, yeah. Okay, so our first um, our first hunt is just located north, or just ahead of us, I should say, uh, and then we'll take on those mind flayers. So we've got some Vortooths, um, weak to pole arms and ice, much like other sort of similar to the saber tooths that we've already seen. You will find that enemies of a uh, of a similar type will be weak to similar, you know, the same elements and things like that. Seeing as it's working so well recently, we might as well start with a... Lovely. Okay then, so we will now head over to our next our next quest. And we will obviously avoid the the iron giant. Found her all the way over there. So mind flayers are a type of um another type of demon. Um 
they can be a right pain. Um, they have an attack which you pretty much need to parry. If you don't parry, it will probably kill you. So um, they can be quite, um, quite dangerous to us. Still. It should be a good battle, which is always the, uh, the way I look at it, at least. So we get a behemoth horn. Next team, but knocked. Okay, is there some more Vortooths? Which we don't really need to fight. But these guys. Okay, so it begins. Level 19. Oh, and this takes forever. It's still worth us doing, just so we know exactly what we need to be um, using in terms of, of, of spells and things like that. I may well change character in this one, just um, for the fun of it. Because... What's the point in having the Royal Edition if you're not going to make use of the Royal, uh, you know, the Royal Only perks and things like that? So yeah, um, an enemy like the Mind Flayers are near enough a boss at the end of, I think, this chapter actually. I think at the end of chapter three. So um, just taking on them and knowing what sort of things to expect will be useful. So we've got weak to lightning, pole arms, and daggers. Okay. So let's try Ignis here. I think my main issue is currently I am forgetting how best to use Ignis's uh, Ignis's skills. So I think he's doing a lot of damage. Let's just bring back Ignis.
Okay, so hardly ideal that. But we worked it through. Again, I think um, part of it would definitely be the sort of needing to get used to another f um, another set of um, battle sort of modes, because um, you know it's been a while since playing, for example, uh, episode Gladio or even episode Ignis, and so um, sort of trying to remember how that each of those battle modes uh, works. So Ignis has his spell daggers, which allow him to take each of the sort of, you know, infuse his daggers with different elements. So I was using lightning there, because obviously lightning is incredibly, um, you know, was effective on those mind flares. Um, but I feel like I could have still done it better in another way. We just got a bit unlucky, because I think we got double Blizzara on both of our... Um, both of our spells when uh, Blizzara Thundara would have worked better. But that's okay. That's why you don't use the jewel casts. Um, or at least you don't rely on the jewel cast, let's put it that way. Okay, so we've done those two, which means it is time for us to look at taking on Deadeye. So this requires a sort of uh, a multi-stage uh, little adventure into the Nebula Wood. Um, so the reason that we're still heading south even though it's pointing north is because we need to find our entrance to the Nebula Wood, which I believe is just a little bit north of... a little bit north of, of Wiz's... Uh, Chocobo outpost. Yeah, so here we have our, uh, our path that leads into the Nebula Wood and towards the lair of the Behemoth Deadeye. I feel like maybe even doing this at night is even is going to be even better for the uh, for the, at least the atmosphere of the battle and things like that. So you can see here that the path uh, our path left would take us uh, back towards the havens, but we're going to head right. Through where Deadeye has been doing his damage and into the Nebula Wood. Okay, so after getting everyone cold, let's keep moving on. This is like a mini dungeon, uh, as it were. Nothing really too serious for us to be worried about, but um, obviously the map's changed slightly and... Um, at least allows you a bit more sort of chance to, 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 to check some stuff. So. so here we have it. The Nebula Wood, fog-laden forest located in the western Malachi Hills, often referred to as the Mistwood for the clouds that enshroud the land. The grove can be found by following the road north from Wiz Chocobo Post, then breaking from the beaten path. After passing through a peculiar rock formation, mist starts to gradually obscure the way ahead. 
The low visibility and unsteady terrain made this area perfect for training soldiers to fight in the unfavourable conditions. The ruins of an old Lucian armoury still stand to this day, but caution is advised. Live explosives still line the walls. Okay, then. So we're going to have our chance to, uh, to proceed to crouch down through this little section. Gladio's insistence on going first. Just a little taste uh, of uh, what some of the uh, the monsters can be like. And now the mist gets heavier. Heavier still, at least. Exercise due caution.
Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty cool screenshot there of just the uh, the behemoth wandering through the mist. I hope Prompto is getting some good shots. Okay then. So we know where Deadeye's lair is, but before we take him on, if we head to the opposite side of this little clearing area, we can find. Another little treasure off the ground, a strong bow. And now I think it's time. It's time for us to take on Deadeye. So we'll squeeze through. All in a day's work. And the boys just magically arrive ahead of us. And we have some elemental deposits, or at least a fire one it to start off with. And so we reach the ruins of that training ground that were mentioned earlier, uh, almost as if it's there to give a little bit of uh, a little bit of colour to the history of, uh, of why there would be such a building in the middle of this uh, misty, murky forest. Okay, so detonate drums with fire. I do have a fire spell, I'm pretty sure. See if we can't uh, That looked out pretty well. There we go. Good work, Prompto. 
clearly Prompt Hose RPG was doing a huge amount of damage there. Um, it is very it's a very useful weapon, at least on these um, much larger enemies um, than... So yeah, um, it allows you to do um, a large amount of damage, especially to very big enemies, which can't really avoid it so much. Um, it has its limitations, obviously, against uh, smaller, more uh, agile enemies and things like that. But it definitely worked there, which is always a nice thing, when a plan comes together, as it were. Okay, so, having completed that little quest, we should now be able to return to Wiz. Uh, and it's almost like they're going to drag it out by making you run all the way around, uh, just to illustrate how much uh, benefit you're going to get when you can finally... Uh, when you can finally use the chocobos. Um, and furthermore, Wiz will give us some more quests as well, um, all relating to chocobos, um, with various perks and various um, bonuses um, for the chocobos. And also, um, he'll give you access to um, the chocobo racing course. Um, Where you can furthermore, um, you know, continue to uh, to mess around with your chocobo and that sort of stuff. Still, this has been very successful. Um, it's going. We've done a lot today, which is always good. Um, this is definitely about as far as I was expecting to get. Um, at least in, what's it, about an hour in, so, or just over an hour. So, yeah, not too bad. We could definitely continue to do more. Um, like I said, um, we need to return to Hammerhead and hand in a bunch of stuff. And in doing that, um, we may well... Um, I mean, once we get the car, frankly, we could head over to the Ketia Highland around this area uh, and do what D Dino wants us to do and then go all the way down to Golden and then um, continue that sort of uh, trajectory. There's a lot of stuff that um, we can yet do. Um, Where's everyone else? Why is it just Noctis? Okay, so, another easy little battle. And yeah, so we're going to return to Wiz. Um, I can't remember if that is the only thing we need to do in order to unlock Chocobos. I'm hoping it is. Because um, as I've said before, Chocobos just make traveling all the more enjoyable. Um. Little bit of platforming. We're here. The boy did it. You took down Deadeye. The area is safe again and we owe it all to you. On behalf of the locals, I give you my heartfelt thanks. After all, that's a chocobo. I 
birds that you've spoken. You can win them anytime you like. Y'all are some pretty tough customers. And that takes us up to rank three as well when it comes to um, nice work, our hunter ranks. Boy, you really saved our hides. Glad to see y'all made it back in one piece. Woohoo! <laughs> Come on, Noct! Let's go for a ride! So, chocobos are now available to be rented. We can buy the tickets at the rented bird stations that we've seen around in each of the settlements. And yeah, I think that is going to be a good place for us to finish off this episode. So I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope you'll see me on the next.